Hello, ladies and gents. I hope you're having a great day today. I want to give you a word that God had shared with me a while back. So really, regardless of whether or not you're a Christian, I think we're all waiting on dreams and desires and things to come to pass. We're waiting to step into things uh, that we're not quite at yet. And that's what at least we as believers believe that this period between where we are now and where we're trying to get to, that's what this period is for, to prepare us for the promise, to prepare us for the thing that is next. Uh, And I know sometimes I can get unfocused, and if I get too unfocused, I can slip back into patterns and mindsets that this period was meant to shed. I can pick them right back up because they're comfortable, because they're easy, because It's just what I know. And God gave me something as I was slipping back into an old mindset. He gave me something, and I I really don't know the origin, but I I do know that God is using it nonetheless. So what I heard was this in my spirit. Kendrick, I'm fighting like hell to get you out of Egypt, and you keep on making extended staying plans. I'll say it one more time. Kendrick, I'm fighting like hell to get you out of Egypt and you keep making extended staying plans. And if you don't know much about the Bible, let me just give you a synopsis. A lot of the Bible is symbolic and Egypt is like many other things in the Bible. It is symbolic. Egypt represents a barren place. It's a place where God had sent his own people to be slaves for 400 years and he made this promise to this guy named Abraham and Abraham was uh, he came from a family of idolaters he himself was an idolater but God had gotten a hold of him and he decided to pledge his life to the Lord and out of that blessing that favor and God's grace God said he was going to make Abraham's descendants as numerous as the stars are in the sky and as numerous as the little teeny tiny grains of sand on the seashore. And you can read about that the first time he makes it, I think, in, yes, in Genesis 12. And he reaffirms the, the promise and he gives a little bit more insight, meaning God, in Genesis 15. Because God's revelation is gradual. So he didn't give him all, everything at one time, but over time he gave it more and more. And he says, yes, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with more children than you can count. And if you go back and you actually look in Galatians 3, you'll find out that God was faithful because we, as believers, we are part of Abraham's seed. Uh, Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, and he uses, it's a singular word. We, along with uh, the Jewish people, the people of Jewish faith, we are one seed. We are all Abraham's seed. But nonetheless, it's a totally different conversation. Um, he says, yes, I'm going to bless you with a lot of children, a lot of descendants, but, uh, before I bless you with all these descendants and, uh, before I can give you what was to become the promised land, what was, what was to become Canaan, there we go. Sorry. Get a little tongue tied there. Uh, I'm going to send your people into a foreign land which we now know to be Egypt, to be slaves for 400 years. And after 400 years, God was faithful to them in the midst of it all throughout the entire 400 years. Yes, they still were robbed, and I'm sure they were raped and pillaged, and some of them were murdered, and entirely just horrible bad things happened to them because that's just the nature of slavery. Nonetheless, though, God did not forget him forget his people in the midst of that and they came out they came out we've all heard the song Moses told Pharaoh let my people go that song so he brings out his people Pharaoh his army they're drowned in the Red Sea and though this is the tragedy of the entire story though the Israelites their physical bodies left Egypt that unfruitful, barren place, their minds stayed. 
and that really is the, the tragedy of the entire story. God was trying to bring them out, and he kept on trying to bring them out, including their minds. And eventually, an entire generation lost out on the promised land because of unbelief. And there were only two people from that generation that was brought out of Egypt that actually winded up seeing the promised land, promised land Joshua and Caleb. All the other roughly, I don't know, Bible said, uh, the Bible doesn't say, we estimate it was around 2 million people. Uh, they didn't make it. So for 40 years, they're sent to wander in the desert, wander in the desert, waiting for that generation of people to die off so that they could finally go into the promised land. So my question is, so we don't all have to wander in the desert for the next 40 years. What is your Egypt? What is that thing that God is trying to bring you out of and you just can't seem to find your way out? What is it? And once you establish what your Egypt is, the question that you need to ask God is, how can I partner with you to get out of this situation when I'm supposed to get out of it first? And then how can we get out of this situation? Because that's the quickest way out. Um, I come from a family of Marines, and there's a saying that the Marine Corps uses a lot, uh, at least for the ones that go to Paris Island uh, in way, 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 way south, uh, South Carolina. The saying is this, the quickest way off the island is to graduate. What I'm trying to tell you is the quickest way to get out of Egypt is to get out of it what you need, get, need to get out of it, get the training, get the expertise, whatever you need to get out of it. And then that's the quickest way to get out of that situation. But nonetheless, moving forward, uh, as we just get out of the COVID-19 epidemic and just the craziness that this has just been, uh, just the with the lack of normalcy that we've had. Uh, I have this, this one thing I'd just like to implore to you. Do not forget what you have learned in this situation. You can forget how you learned it, but don't forget what you learned. But most importantly, don't forget why you learned it. Because that's probably what's more important than anything else. Because at the end of the day, life is a class, as I've heard it put. And it's always teaching. Everything that you go through is meant to teach you something. And that's a hard pill to swallow. That's a real hard pill to swallow, especially sometimes as believers. Because no matter what pain or hell you're going through, you're expected to believe that God is for you and that he's with you and he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. And all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Those are all things that scripture indicates, but it doesn't always feel like that. But feelings are fickle. you, you got to be very careful. But nonetheless, I want to close on this last thought, and I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, no matter what you go through in this life, um, one, don't miss out on that, that, that Canaan. I, the thing for me, the Canaan for me is God's purpose for my life. So that's where I kind of took it. And that assignment that he has for me in this season. And I just want to implore to everyone out there who's looking at this, hey, I want you to know this. God loves you. God is for you. And yes, he does work all things together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And realize that in the midst of your assignment, whatever it may be, that it will somehow glorify the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. It will glorify Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in some way, shape, or form. It might be in walking like him. It might be in just talking like him. You may never get to set foot on a stage. It doesn't matter about any of that. It is about living a life that is becoming of a child of the most high God. That's what it's all about. Making him known and knowing him more. That's what it's all about. So guys, uh, and ladies for that matter, I just want to give you that uh, word hope it wasn't too long. Real quick, do a few things for me. Uh, like this, share this, uh, because everyone is in need of this message. So 
Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. But more importantly, God does. See you on the next one. Bye.